I say, don't marry who you love. I say, love who you marry. Because that's what the Bible teaches. If you love somebody and God approves of that person, that's good. It's an added advantage. But you may love somebody and God will say that's not the person. You will sacrifice your love and marry who God says. And so you are asking the question, you say, if I don't marry who I love, who should I marry? You marry the person God leads you to. Number two, you marry a person that fears God, that is under the government of God. And number three, you marry the person that is compatible with your purpose. If you find these three, you will love that person. But if you marry somebody you love, who God is not choosing for you, or you marry somebody you love, who is not under God's government, and you marry who you love, and he does not compact with your purpose, after a few years, you will discover that that love will vanish. Because if you study love itself in context, you will discover that it will be impossible to really get to love somebody that you have not understood and have not trusted. Because love has three cadres. The first cadre of love is affection. The second cadre of love is understanding. Understanding is superior to affection. If you start working with somebody and you journey for a while, if you can't understand yourself, you will discover that the lack of understanding will destroy the affection that once existed. Because affection is superior to understand to. Understanding is superior to affection in the ladder of love. And then when you move a bit further, you will now discover that the third ladder or the third rung on the ladder is trust. Trust is superior to understanding. If you don't trust somebody, you will discover that understanding will collapse. Affection will also collapse. And so when you are even talking love, you cannot really explore love in its fullness unless as you marry somebody and live with a person for a long time. That's why God commands people to love who they marry. And he doesn't really endorse who you love before you get married. If you do and God chooses that person, it's an added advantage. And if you have studied love also, apart from this ladder that I've explained to you, there are four things you will discover about love. Because there are four words for love in the Greek. The first word for love is philio. The second word for love is iros. The third word for love is storge. And the fourth word for love is agape. Love is deeper than the feeling. The word philio is a kind of love that is created by circumstance. And that kind of love runs on emotion. So if I'm in a place with somebody for a while, because that location kept us in that place, we are going to discover that there are few things that connect us. And so because of that circumstance that is created, we will begin to bond in a way. That kind of love is called filio. If you change that circumstance for a while, that love will begin to die. Because that love is orchestrated by a circumstance and that love runs on emotion. If you change the circumstance and you alter the emotion, that love will die. It's called filio. Friendship operates at that level. And then you have what we call iros. Iros is romantic love. Romantic love is motivated by your definition of beauty. It's an affection that goes in the direction of what you consider to be beautiful. And so, for example, if you consider a fair complexion to be beautiful, when you see somebody that is fair, you will get to develop that kind of affection towards that person. But over time, you will discover that because the glory of man diminishes, a point will come when that affection won't mean, that look won't mean much to you anymore. And ask those who are married, they will tell you. When you get married, you are going to discover that as powerful as sex is, even sex will become a responsibility. It's when you are not yet married that demons are touching your emotion. You say, hey. <laughs> when you get married, you will know that demons were involved. You saw the lady's leg, you say, Jesus. <laughs> when you get married, you will discover that that leg can be on your head. You will be burdened. Because iros is motivated by what you consider beautiful. A point will come, it will diminish. You will now discover that iros is not enough to bond you. That's why those who run to marriage because of sex, after one month, they run out. And the people you meet before you get married, most times, 
is filio and iros you feel for them. The higher kind of love is called stoge and agape. Stoge is companionship. Stoge is built by understanding. Stoge is not dependent on emotion. That's why people who have understanding, when they become old at 70, you will see them hold themselves walking together. It's called companionship. There are two things that bet stoge. One is understanding, another is covenant. And covenant runs on blood. So the relationship you have with your brother and your sister is called stoge. That love originates from your bloodline. And so you will discover that you will live with your brother for many years. Even if you fight, a point will come, you will need that person. And if you are quarreling and the person dies, you can't sleep. You will not feel it in your mind. It will be a weight on your chest. If you have lost somebody before, you will know. Because that covenant is breaking. And so that detachment will create a weight on you that you can't define. Because that kind of love is covenant-oriented and it is also based on understanding. It is when you get into marriage that you can build stoge. There's no way you can build stoge before marriage. Because marriage is prosecuted on covenant. And that covenant is enacted on the altar before God and it is consummated on the bed of affection. And then as you walk with that person over time, you will now begin to build understanding. You will now discover that if that person can discern you and you can discern the person, a kind of love that you can't define begins to grow. You just know, it looks as if you become, in, in, you become dependent on yourself so much that you can't do without each other. You can be together for two days. There's no iros operation. There's no sex. There's no, but you are gisting and talking to yourself as though sometimes you even gossip with one another. What's happening is talking. You will discover that in one day you talk to yourself more than 20 times. And it's not that initial. This time around, it's dependence. Companionship is being formed. But it is rooted in what? Understanding. And understanding takes time. And it's also rooted on covenant. And there's no covenant before marriage. So you can't enter the realm of stoge until you get married. And then the final one is agape. Agape is sacrifice. Agape is self-denial. The reason you can build agape is not even because you have a connection with that person. Why filio is generated by circumstance? Iros is generated by your definition of beauty. Stoge is def defined or generated by understanding and covenant. Agape is external. Agape is dependent on the level of trust and obedience you have for another force outside of that marriage. That's why it's called sacrifice. You don't build agape because of your connection with the person. You build agape because of your both connection with a superior being. And so most of the things you do with that person may not be because of that person. It will be because of your loyalty and submission to that being that binds you together. And so many times when you go through a relationship as strong as marriage, you will discover the reason you will stay will not be because of the person. The reason you will stay will be because of your submission to God. That's why it is in worship and it is in loyalty to spirit beings that agape, the subject of agape, can be defined. And you cannot build agape until you marry somebody. Forget about... Uh, the card you wrote some romantic words and sent. Sacrifice is deeper than card. It's death. 